There's kitchen, there's mingin, there's life forms evolving in this kitchen. There's fish in the fridge, and they look like they're thinking about walking. Oh God, it's shocking. I went to London when I was 17 and I went to a squat in Islington and it was full of Letter Kenny people. There was two squats, one was Letter Kenny people and the one next door was Wexford people. And there was a lot of Johns and there was English John and Irish John, and Scotch, it was always different. So one day somebody called me LJ and I was thinking, what? I said, Little John. And I was 17 so I thought I hadn't stopped growing at the time so I took a bit of umbrage at the time. But um, gradually, as it became a, a, a form of affection, I, I hung on to it. I was born in Glasgow. In those days, there'd be certain occasions where all the neighbours would come round and there'd be drinking songs and that. My father used to do a piece by Will Fife. He learned it in Donegal. Will Fife was a music hall comedian. Um, so that was one of the first influences of something that, wow, really amazed me. British TV comedy would really influenced me, and the Beatles, of course. By the time I was a teenager, I think the mo one of the most influential things happened in my life was Jimi Hendrix, when I was 12 in Donegal, and um, very oppressive society at the time, and the troubles in the north of Ireland, and the options of reality being showed to me were very... Ugh. So um, then I heard Jimi Hendrix and I thought there's a whole world that no one's tell telling me about. So David Bowie was a big influence, you know, because he had the theatricality of it. And I was just watching uh, Width of a Circle from 1973 or something, where it shows you him doing the wall. So I played in a band, garage bands, and um, I would have done this whole thing with the wall as well. It all goes back to that music hall thing as well, though, which was visual from late 19th century, early 20th century. Powerful visual, powerful live, kind of folk stories, very popular. I mean, it was the pop music of the time, mixture of songs, stories, and um, which is a cabaret style as well. Well, my shows before those shows weren't particularly autobiographical. They had elements of it, but um, like say, for example, the, the, the dairy boat would have had, the father would have been an abusive alcoholic, um, physical violence. My father was the most gentlest man in the world. And sometimes he'd come to my shows and after the show, people would be giving him dirty looks, you know, because you think he's the father, you know. So sometimes those early shows weren't so autobiographical. Those series of shows, the Dublin years, the London years, and all those, they're, they're particularly autobiographical. And uh, it's difficult because they do expose me in certain ways, you know, talking about addiction, talking about um, feeling depressed, you know, but yeah, lots of things. That relationship between the performer and the audience and the telling of truths, whether they be 100% my truth or they're just a, a universal truth, it's a challenge sometimes, but it's a uh, it's great because it's, it sets you free. The sky was long, touching the chimneys. If I go to the essence of those times as you will, because you, obviously you doubt your work at different times, and what's the point? Particularly in Ireland, choosing to live in the west of Ireland as well, you know, which beautiful as it is, it's not the centre of um, ambition career-wise, but um, there's a beautiful artistic community, lovely people, a great environment. This is where I want to be, but it makes it tough to make a living. So you really question yourself why you're doing it and each piece of work as the years go by, why I'm going to put myself through this again. So it comes to it, it's like all my work is about love, and particularly in retrospect, I can see that as about love and connection. Basically it's the same stories, the same with what I got from Hendrix, that connection, or Bowie, do you know? I aspire to that still, really. Um, that, wow, that's what I aspired to, which I think is love. Let me brothers 
When I was a teenager, we played in bands, and it was show bands, so it was all country and Irish music. And, and we'd be playing rock songs, doing Rolling Stones songs and that. And then on top of that, I'd be trying to introduce visual aspects as well, and with stroboscope lights, and I'd be juggling with a knife or something like that, trying to make more of it, make a theatricality, but still have the music and still have some story to it. So um, it's really the same things that I'm doing now, but say recently what I've done is, well, 2007, Laura Sheeran, suggested to use a loop pedal. So that would have been a whole other area for me. The fact, because I always love live music in my shows as opposed to recorded music. Um, for me, it's just, it's a whole texture thing, you know? So that developed into a whole spark plug that had three loop pedals, which surprisingly won a Irish Times Theatre Award for sound design. So there was that element of, okay, so I can do sound design. My Happy days. Now I play regularly with the band, the Caledonia Highly Strung Orchestra, and we've been together about five years now, or six years. It was really beautiful coming together with people that you've known for a long while and and you know how to play it, and that's just the greatest thing in the world. So, And because everyone's been away doing their own evolving when we come together, it's really, really rich, but we still get that intimacy. The most important thing that I've learned, because I've worked with an awful, awful lot of good musicians, and uh, I've come from a very punky place, which is do it anyway, even though I'm not very proficient and I can hardly play. I've got all these instruments, but I can hardly play them, you know? The thing that I've always loved about musicians, they're always generous to work with, so they teach me lots of little things technical things. But the most important thing is the positive feedback and you can do it. Do you know, and I mean Laura Sheeran, I've known since she was four years old. She would be my musical mentor. I've known her be since before she was four, but when she was four, um, I remember watching her playing the piano, get piano in the house, and she played one note and looked at it and listened. And then she played another one she didn't like the sound of those two notes together. She tried, she liked those two together. So it just taught me that basic lesson about the relationship between musical notes. And it's about what you think sounds good in that relationship. <laughs> Caledonia Highly Strung Orchestra, they're uh, classically trained and so, so good. The fact that they'll play with me <laughs> is just so good for, you know, yeah, hey, they don't mind playing with me. I must be all right. So, you know, it just gives you that confidence to play. And that's the basic thing that I've got is some confidence to play, which is really important. The most important thing that an artist does is play and imagine because we create music that expands who we are. We create stories that expands who we are. And I think it's the job, the purpose of the artist is to expand the universe where you've got a universe that's totally been contracted by the likes of Donald Trump and bureaucracy, racist, stupid, homophobic, all these people who just contract the universe, whereas the artist's job is to expand the universe and whatever, and they can do that in the most mundane way as well. And I think every artist does that in some way. Mm.